2019 has been a busy year for the rail industry. The sector has begun a new funding cycle, Control Period 6, whilst the Williams Rail Review, Brexit and the need to decarbonise and digitalise will all lead to significant change over the coming years. We spoke to Darren Kaplan, Chief Executive of the Railway Industry Association, about the current state of the industry. 2019 has been a busy year for the rail industry. Control period six, the Williams Rail Report, Oka V Review, Brexit, and so much more. How are members feeling about those issues and the coming year? Well, there's a lot of issues. I mean, we actually did a survey, a Comres independent survey on this, and there's mixed views about the market going forward. Some are very optimistic, some are concerned. And the, the key issue, I think, is uncertainty. So we've had the Network Rail uh, devolution plan that came in in June in 2019. Bedding that in brings uncertainty. Uh, Brexit brings uncertainty. I mean, as, as we talk now, where, we, where it goes, we don't know, but that brings uncertainty to our, our members in terms of uh, the supply chain. The Williams Review brings uncertainty. Will there be a restructure for next year? Will there be a white paper that massively changes the way we structure as an organisation, uh, as a sector? And then the Oak Review Review, and one of our major projects, lots of members involved with HS2, uh, where are we going with that? So, so the background is real uncertainty. And then add to it some of the other uh, issues, so funding boom and bust, enhancements visibility, trying to decarbonise the sector without a rolling programme of electrification. These are all issues that we have to deal with. Um, and, and that's why we're going to try and work very hard in 2020 to overcome some of those challenges because our members don't have the certainty of growth that we'd like them to have. Having said all that, we started the year talking about a sense of hiatus. Is that still the sense with members? Well, I mean, on the positive note, our members are getting engaged with lots of schemes and we've just had the enhancements pipeline published. So we still need more detail, we need timescales and budgets, but one of the big issues that we are worried about and our members are worried about in terms of hiatus is the slow start to CP6. Quite simply, if we don't do the work that's required between April 2019 and March 2020, then uh, if we, up to 10% of that can be carried over, but the rest is lost. So we must get that uh, uh, investment put in. So we conducted a survey of members, and we've had about 30 members come back to us with their views, and I'll read out the responses to it. It's very worrying, it makes worrying reading for our members and, and for the wider sector. So what they're telling us is very few tenders have been issued, Network Rail is not releasing projects quickly enough. A 20 to 30 percent reduction in year-end sales is making forecasting difficult for 2020. And here's a quote that I think is particularly pertinent. Uh, one of our members has said, "The shortfall in work is having a significant impact, resulting in freezes in recruitment and investment. Some companies are laying off staff and fear that some skilled labour may leave the rail uh, industry, either for other sectors or overseas opportunities." So clearly, that's a big worry. So we would encourage our members to get together with Network Rail and DFT to make sure that we actually get the work done in this year in CP6, in the first year, so we can move on and deliver through the whole control period to 2024. Having said all that, turning to something positive, this year members at last got publication of the Rail Enhancements List. Tell us what was RIA's role in that? Well, we campaign very hard on the enhancements issue. Um, by not having a visible enhancements uh, pipeline, uh, our members can't plan for the work ahead. They weren't looking for guaranteed projects. They want to know what kind of projects are coming up in the next few years so they can ensure they can keep teams together, they can invest in plant and machinery, they can invest in skills and apprenticeships and all the good stuff that goes on in our sector. But without knowing what those projects are, and there have been no project announcements since 2017, since, since the autumn of 2017, they can't plan for the future. So we've been trying very hard to try and raise the profile of this issue. In September this year, 2019, we launched our SURE campaign, Show Us the Rail Enhancements. It got quite a bit of attention. And then in October, we, um, uh, we launched our Enhancements Clock. And what that was, was a countdown, or a count up, of the number of days since the government said it was going to make an announcement, i.e. September um, uh, 2018. And it's been a year and 26 days before they actually did make the announcement. However, on the 6th of October, the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, announced the list. We're very positive about that. And it shows the power of lobbying and public affairs. Decarbonisation is a big challenge. What is the rail industry doing and what needs to happen to deal with it? Well, decarbonisation is a goal um, by government, so a 2040 decarbonisation strategy, and we see that as an opportunity to, to uh, promote some of the green credentials we have as a sector. Clearly, 
you need to have electrification as part of that mix. So on intensively used rail, electrification is the most uh, uh, sustainable form of transport in terms of the rail industry. But you also need other forms of uh, transport we need to invest in as well. Hydrogen, battery powered, uh, bi-mode, tri-mode. All these things means that we can do, play our part in decarbonising the railway industry. But you need government policy to support that. So they need to give us a rolling programme of electrification that will help. And they need to make sure we can invest in those technologies as partners so we can do, uh, have the green technology of the future. But what I would say is the decarbonisation ag agenda is an opportunity for the UK to be a world leader. We can produce the technology, the innovation and export it around the world for greening up transport via rail. So although it's a threat and, and everyone's having to deal with the threat of, 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 of climate change, from a, a rear perspective, we should take advantage of the, the need to develop green technology, and that's what we're supporting. Darren, 2020 marks the 145th anniversary of the Railway Industry Association, which seems like as good a moment as any for a reminder of what it is and why it's needed. Well, the Railway Industry Association is a, a trade association that, that's representing the national uh, body of, of members all across the board, whether it's uh, infrastructure, rolling stock, signalling, consultancy, whole range of disciplines that we represent. And uh, we try to be the voice of the rail supply community, the national voice of the rail supply community. Our purpose is to try and do everything we can to make the sector bigger and better in any way we can. And everything we do is geared towards doing that. So there's a lot of positives in the sector that we try and promote. We promote the fact that there are 600,000 jobs, 36.4 billion GVA, 11 billion pound in tax, tax revenue uh, comes from the sector, uh, and the fact that the passenger numbers have doubled in the last 20 years, and freight done so well, uh, growing by 80% in 20 years, and there's a strong safety record. There's a lot of stuff, positive stuff to promote. But there's also a lot of challenges to overcome, and that's where we can come in. We can really help with trying to smooth out the, the pipeline of work, to try and get visibility to the enhancements pipeline. The other thing I think it's very important for a trade association like ours to do is to bring people together. Um, it's really important that we bring our members together with clients, politicians, other stakeholders, but with each other as well. So tier ones and tier twos can engage with SMEs, um, uh, and that's the forums that we provide as a trade association. So 145 years on, there's still a need for us. And I would hazard a guess that in 145 years, there'd still be a need for us, and, and hopefully we'll be doing the same things and even better then.